Welcome to our lessons on proportions, part two. This is our second lesson on proportions. It kind of goes hand in hand with the lesson that we had the other day, which is proportions, part one. The first question or type of question that we're going to look at is when you have a proportion or two equivalent fractions and there's a variable and you need to solve for that variable, we need to find out what n is. To do that, we use something called cross multiplication. In other words, we're going to multiply 10 times n across there and 20 times 5 across there. As you see, it makes a cross, and that's probably the reason why they call it cross multiplication. We'll end up with 20 times 5 is 100. 10 times n is 10n. Then we'll divide each side by 10. And that will help us to isolate our variable by itself on the right-hand side of the equal sign. And we now know that 10 is equal to n. So what that's saying is that 10 over 20 is the same as 5 over 10. So that's our proportion. We solved for the variable that was there. The next one, just to show us a little bit more practice, and this one here, I just moved the variable to the bottom. But it's going to be the same type of question. We're going to use, again, cross multiplication, where we multiply n times 36 and 24 times 3. 24 times 3 is 72. And 36 times n is 36n. To solve for the variable n, we'll divide both sides of the equation by 36. Those cancel each other out. And that shows us that n is equal to 2. 72 divided by 36 is 2. So 3 over 2 is equal to 36 over 24. Those are equivalent fractions, equivalent ratios, or in other words, they're proportional to each other. They're proportions. Let's go ahead and do now some practical questions using proportions, something that might actually help us to to give kind of, like I said, a practical application. If you have 50 gumballs and they cost you $12.50, how much would it cost to buy seven gumballs? I'm going to set up my fraction first of 50 over 12.50. I put the number of gumballs on top and the cost on the bottom. So the next fraction that I'm doing I'm going to set it up the same way, the number of gumballs on top and the cost on the bottom. We don't know the cost, so I'm going to simply put in the variable C. That's what we're looking for. Now this looks familiar. This is a proportion that we can solve, just like we did the last ones, using cross multiplication. So I'll start out by multiplying C times 50. That gives me 50C, and then I'm going to multiply 1250 times 7, and that gives me $87.50. Now to isolate the variable of C by itself, I have to divide both sides by 50. These two cancel each other out, and I end up with C being equal to $1.75. Right, so I would write a sentence over here that um, seven gumballs cost one dollar seventy-five cents. So that I know clearly what I'm showing as my answer, I state it in a sentence. Whenever the question appears in a sentence, I like to write a sentence to show the answer. Seven gumballs cost a dollar seventy-five. In the next question, oh, before we go to the next question, I'm sorry, I want to emphasize this. The key to success in proportions is making sure that your fractions are the same. If you have miles over hours, you have miles over hours. Okay, A distance and a time, like this one here, we have a distance and a distance, a time and a time, that does not work. You have to have the same measurement in both. You have to have miles and miles hours and hours. If you're going to do kilometers and minutes, you do kilometers and minutes so that the fractions are the same. That's the key to success in proportions. I'm going to show you an example of that right here. 
of kilometers a minute. When Jim took a trip to Canada, he runs three kilometers in 10 minutes. See, if he were in America, he'd be running miles per hour or something, miles per minute, I don't know. But he goes to Canada, and he runs three kilometers in 10 minutes. That is my fraction. So I have kilometers up top, minutes at the bottom. OK. If he can keep up this pace, how long will it take him to go 15 kilometers? So we're saying 15 kilometers in t amount of time. We don't know the time. That's the proportion that we have set up. So now we can use our cross multiplication where we say 10 times, or t times 3 is 3t. And 10 times 15 will give us 150. To isolate t by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 3. And we end up with the final answer that t is equal to 50. What that means in words, because I like to write down words, the questions in words, is that Jim runs 15 kilometers in 50 minutes. That doesn't really tell us a whole lot. 15 kilometers per 50 minutes, that's not usually the way we talk. So I actually added on a question here. How fast is he running in kilometers per hour? So now we're going to have to do a second proportion to actually find out how many kilometers is it per hour. I'm going to do the same thing I did before here, where I start with 3 over 10. He's running 3 kilometers in 10 minutes. What I'm searching for is how many, so like the distance, I'll just call it d, how many miles, or kilometers, I'm sorry, how many kilometers will he run in 60 minutes? That's the trick with this one. We have kilometers and minutes. We need to have kilometers and minutes. All right? We know that 60 minutes is equal to one hour. So it's saying, how fast is he running in one hour? That's the distance that he will run in 60 minutes. That's the key right there. And you'll see a lot of questions like that, where it's converting from minutes to hours or hours to minutes. And the key is that you use the same measurement. So if you, in this case, I have it all in minutes. I'm going to say 60 minutes when I'm talking about an hour, because they're the same thing. All right, cross multiplying. 60 times 3 is 180. 10 times d is 10d. I'll divide both sides by 10. To find that the distance is 18 kilometers. So that means that Jim is running 18 kilometers per hour. So the distance, 18 kilometers in one hour, or in 60 minutes. All right, so we've essentially done two sets of proportions here. But in both cases, we make sure that we have kilometers on the top, minutes on the bottom. Kilometers, minutes. Kilometers, minutes. Kilometers, minutes. I'm going to say that over and over and over so that you'll know the key to being successful in this is setting up your proportions the same on the top as on the bottom in both fractions. All right. That's the end of our lesson on proportions. I hope that it's been helpful for you, and have a wonderful day.